I'd like to call the meeting to order and welcome everybody to the February 22nd, I'm sorry, March 15th, 2022, 5.30 p.m. meeting. Reading the wrong line there. Uh, meeting at 6 p.m. We do have a quorum. Our first item of business is to approve the meeting minutes from February 22nd, 2022, our regular meeting. Do we have motion a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve meeting minutes. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, the motion passes. Our first item of business, recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alderman, rezoning of property requested by SEC Inc. 0.49 acres, property located at 396 Old Nashville Highway, tax map 17, parcel 23, current zoning district R1 low density residential zoning district, proposed zoning district C2, highway service zoning district, property owned by Alicia Rafik, Etux Christian Yosef. Mr. Logan. Thank you. This is a request for rezoning at 396 Old Nashville Highway. And uh, this property, you can see it on the screen there. Uh, currently, there is a mobile home on the property. And uh, we'll see pictures of it in just a moment. But um, uh, this property does sit next to um, C3 zoned property. Uh, so this is near the intersection of Jefferson Pike and Old Nashville Highway. And you can see here in the uh, photo, the uh, corner opposite of this property, more or less, is the uh, Shell gas station. And then across the road, more or less, is the uh, pharmacy, Fitchell's Pharmacy. <clears throat> so all these parcels are zoned C3, and uh, this applicant is requesting C3. You can see here on the zoning map, this parcel is currently R1, which is low density residential. And um, the properties I just spoke of, you can see in this uh, lighter white color are C3. And um, there is R2 to the rear of this property, uh, starts a large area of R2. Uh, so there is um, single family residential on two sides. And then there's C3 um, across the road and beside it. And here's some photos of the property. And these are taken from the corner um, parking lot there where the uh, restaurant, existing restaurant is. So you can see uh, this is a, a single wide mobile home. And uh, it's of course the driveway there. And you can see the uh, neighboring house in the distance. And then this is uh, a photo of the existing restaurant, which is next door to this property. Again, this is zone C3, and that is what the applicant is requesting. So this is a plan. It's it's only a an abstract plan. This is this is not a site plan, but uh, more or less, the applicant was trying to see what future development might look like on this site. So you can see a parking area there, as well as a building that looks like it has maybe three tenants. Um, but again, this is very, very early and preliminary. So this is not a site plan. It's just a, a concept that uh, the applicant wanted to submit. And a little bit closer view of that. And you can see, um, the future widening of Old Nashville would require some dedication right away, and they're showing that in the concept plan. And uh, that completes the report. I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Do we have any questions or comments? I have some questions. For the applicant or the? Actually, for Bo first. Thank you, sir. So on this workshop agenda, it says that they're they're wanting to go to C2. And on the commission report, it says C3. I also thought that those properties there on the corners were C2. Yeah, that was changed. They asked for C2 a month ago, and then that was changed to C3. So all documents are now C3. I don't know who would have put that in there. or I, Other people touched the agendas besides myself, so I don't know how C2 got in there. It, it has been C3 for the last month. So they are asking for C3. Okay. Yeah. So which one doesn't the recording of this go off of? So 
Council, please, sir. If we, you could tie it with the motion. I would believe. You're asking if this is, if they're applying for a C2 or a C3? No, I'm asking which, what is this board going to be obligated to because this says C2 and this one says C3. Is this a confusion on this, on staff's end? It's confusion on my part. I mean, I don't. <laughs> so they're so, wanting C3. Yeah, their request is C3. They did submit for C2 60 days ago. And then when they came to that workshop, the planning commission was not favorable to that. So then they changed their request to C3. So now we're voting on C3 is what it, is what it seems okay. like to me. Yeah. I have two different things on two different pieces of paper. I understand. And so yeah, this I'm is, this has happened sure that we're not the past month. It sounds like we're voting on C3 tonight. Okay. Thank you. So motion for or against will be for C3. Correct, Mayor? I make a motion for a favorable recommendation for C3 to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. We have a motion for favorable recommendation Board of Mayor and Alderman for C3 zoning for clarification. We have a second? A second. We have a second. In favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. We have one no from Mr. Rutledge. We will be sending a favorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Next item, site plan, Tidal Wave Auto Spa, one new building containing 3,206 square feet on 2.24 acres, requested by EMC Engineering, property located at Ferguson and Murfreesboro Road, tax map 18, parcels 1.03 and 1.04, C2 Highway Service Zoning District, property owned by TWAS Properties, LLC. Mr. Logan. Thank you. This is a site plan for uh, the Tidal Wave Auto Spa, and um, they are looking at the uh, corner location at Fergus Road and Murfreesboro Road. And um, I know that this is a second or third trip for this project, so y'all are very familiar with it. I'll go over some of the highlights. Um, of course, the uh, flat that's on here later tonight will consolidate the two lots into one. So. The Register of Deeds office in Murfreesboro is, they have authority over these lines, not the city of Laverne. So they're still showing two lots, but the plat later tonight on the agenda will take care of that and combine the two into one. And uh, you can see here in the zoning map, all this property is zoned commercial already. Uh, as you can see, Walmart sits here behind it and it's all the same zoning as Walmart, which is C2 highway commercial. And these site photos uh, kind of show you some of the story. Um, it's pretty much vacant lot right now. Uh, there is, uh, in the distance here, is Murfreesboro Road. And then you can see Bojangles is through these trees here. And then the other side of Bojangles, you're seeing the top of the Walmart gas canopy. So between this lot and the Bojangles is one remaining lot for those of you all who are counting. Um, this won't touch Bojangles, but there's one lot in between the Tidal Wave Auto Spa and Bojangles. And this is another shot to the north, northeast, and you can see the Walmart store in the distance and their driveway that comes off of Fergus as well. And this is the site plan. Um, see here the arrangement of the lot and the building and um, I think last time I went over how a car would enter the site but I think y'all have heard that now two or three times so I won't go over that um, but you can see the general layout of the building they are proposing a uh, the total size of the building is about uh, 2300 square feet and um, of course, they have associated vacuum areas and uh, that type of thing. Uh, the color elevations, uh, we'll get to those. So those were submitted uh, the first go round. They've not changed. So they're still um, proposing a brick and masonry building with the uh, blue metal roof. Um, so that's, that's been consistent throughout. Uh, there's another view of those elevations. 
And I do have quite a bit of glass, um, which is, uh, that's not counted against, uh, glazing is not counted against an applicant in the uh, architectural overlay, so they can have as much glass as they would like. And um, after all the comments the last couple months, um, staff, uh, engineering staff and planning has cleared all of their comments, so they don't have any remaining in the report. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Any questions or comments from the board on this item? We'll see an applicant. Oh, I mean, just, I'm just looking at the, the workshop. We had 14 items that were listed, and they have been cleared up by the engineer. They've also adjusted the entranceway to have the, the, the three, three lanes, and obviously they've um, adjusted the drawing for the junction of Mosbar Road, so it's more clearer than as they showed previously on the workshop documents that we have. So then they've cleared up all the items that we had brought up. Uh, I only Thank have a you. question, uh, maybe for the applicant, um, they want to step forward. Please, sir, would the applicant for this item step to the podium? Name and address for the record, sir. I'm Marshall Cook. I'm an attorney with Spencer Fane, Bo McAllister in Nashville uh, on Union Street. Um, appreciate the opportunity for us to be here again and present this. Uh, this project to you all. This is a it, it's a by right application, and we've worked really hard to meet all your site plan requirements, uh, and to even go a step further and, and and make some additional contributions to the area and to the road that you all have have requested. Um, so, just appreciate that. Appreciate you all giving us the opportunity. As Mr. Logan said, we've we've now met all the comments and agreed to all those comments. There's not anything additional, and I'm gonna have Mr. Marty Murphy uh, with the applicant tell you all a little bit about some of the additional uh, offers that have been made and also answer any questions you've got. Good afternoon. Marty Murphy, 124 East Thompson Street, Thomaston, Georgia. I'm here with Tidal Wave Auto Spa. Mr. Rutledge, you said you had a question? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to make sure that we did have the updated for the poles. Remember, we had talked about you encasing those with uh, uh, brick or like you were going to do on the outside. Uh, if yes, sir. We have patients haven't been updated. I just want to make sure that those were in a Yes, Those sir. Those were updated. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Very good. Any other questions or comments from the board? No questions or comments. We'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to accept as submitted. Motion to accept as submitted. We have a second. A second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. On to our next item. Item number three has deferred. On to item number four. Final plat, BJ's Wholesale, four lots totaling approximately 20 acres requested by Kimley Horn, property located on Industrial Boulevard, tax map 29, parcel 14.01, C2 Highway Service Zoning District, property owned by SSI Laverne, LLC. Mr. Logan. Thank you. This is the uh, final plat for BJ's Wholesale, and um, this site is the... Uh, was at the Boza earlier tonight and uh, did receive a variance for the uh, for all four lots on that plat. So uh, they have received the approvals that were necessary at Boza. So uh, as you know, this is the lot uh, last remaining lot uh, heading southeast on Industrial Boulevard, uh, last one in the city, and touches Target. Uh, you can see on the screen another view of it. Uh, it is zone C2, which is the red color, and that uh, is for C2 Highway Service Commercial. And uh, these are the photos. I'm sure by now you all have seen them many times. So still a vacant area there next to Target. You can see Target in the distance. And uh, these are the billboards here along Industrial Boulevard. And uh, of course, they will be placed on their own lots now after the approvals uh, of the variance at Boza. And um, that was really the last formality that was needed uh, on this plat was uh, the, the Boza meeting. So that's the latest plat that the applicants had submitted for a few weeks now. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions or comments? 
on this item? We've Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to say we, we've, we've been working this for, for many, many months, and I think we got to a point this evening that um, we, where it needs to be, and with that, I'll make a motion to, to pass it as submitted. We have a motion to accept as submitted. We have a second by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Next item, first item under new business, item number five. Final Plat HPR near Shreveman Live Work seven three story live work units on 0 0.90 acres requested by Womble and Associates. Property located on near Shreveman Boulevard, tax map 15, parcel 13.09 C3 neighborhood Z service zoning district, property owned by Abnon Shreveman. Mr. Logan. This is the uh, horizontal property regime plat for the uh, near Shreveman development. And uh, this is uh, located behind the KFC, uh, the KFC at the corner of Waldron and Murfreesboro Road. So um, this site is here tonight to um, satisfy the uh, zoning requirements of the city, which require that this plat um, be presented to the Planning Commission so that these, uh, after these condos are built or townhouses are built, they can be sold fee simple to individual owners. Uh, after the HPR is executed. So this is the uh, lot as it appears uh, currently with no development on it. And then you can see uh, it is now C3 after the rezoning from last year went through and the uh, map was changed. It, it was formerly C2, but now it's C3. And these are just some uh, site photos that shows the uh, TVA power lines that run into Nashville. And then in the distance there is the KFC. And just more there of the vacant land in KFC from last summer. So this is the plat that was submitted for the seven townhomes. And um, again, the uh, the townhomes have already been approved, but uh, they are proposed to be three stories each. And uh, that completes the report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions or comments on this item? None. We will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept as submitted. We have a motion to accept as submitted. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Alderman Coates. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item. Item number six, preliminary plat the retreat at Finch Branch, section two, 31 lots on 12.65 acres requested by SEC Inc. Property located off Irvin and Greenwood Drives, tax map 17L, group A, parcel 8.04, R2 medium density residential zoning district, property owned by Robert and Joan Waldron. Mr. Logan. Uh, this is a request for preliminary plat approval at the retreat at Finch Branch. And this is section two, which is uh, comprises 31 lots on 12.65 acres. So um, here on the screen, you can see phase one is here where you can see the dirt that's been moved. And uh, this is the corner of Irwin and Greenwood drives where the uh, recently a stop sign went up. So that's now a three way stop. That's phase one of this uh, or section one rather of Bench branch, and so tonight we're looking at section two, which is across the creek. If you've driven in there, uh, you know the creek I'm talking about. So uh, section two is wholly on the west side of that creek, and that this is uh, the preliminary plat for that. So zooming in there, you can see the work that's uh, already been done on section one, and it did tie in, by the way, to the old Centennial Drive, which was just a stub out street for many years. So this did extend Centennial. Um, now you can drive down Centennial through section one and then take a left and go back to that three-way stop. Uh, this is all zoned um, R2, which is medium density residential. And um, you can see there in the middle of the screen, the uh, darker brown color is R2. And this is the master plan that was submitted by the applicant. Um, so this shows phase 
uh, section one and two. Um, again, we're here in this more shaded, darker part is section two. And then this is Centennial coming down here in section one. So these are the detailed sheets, and this shows uh, a better view of section two. Again, this is 31 lots on 12.65 acres. And then this is the last sheet that shows the, uh, the remaining lots at the end of the road. And all the technical comments have been addressed over the last four weeks, so uh, there's none remaining. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you'd clarify under technical items, it says C, City of Laverne Subdivision Regulations. That's that's on all of them usually. Okay. It's it's just if there were, that's the section you would look in if there were any comments. Very good. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I have one question for the applicant, please, if you could step forward. If you would come to the podium, sir, name and address, please. Uh, John Miner with SEC, 850 Middle Tennessee Boulevard, Murfreesboro. Yes, sir. One, one question. Do you want to ensure that lot 146 is a buildable lot? Yes. And we provided a letter to Bo signed by the owner um, stating that it, they had a building footprint for every lot. Very good. That, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to accept as submitted. We have a motion to accept as submitted. We have a second. Our second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes, sir. Thank you. Next item, item number seven. Amendment to site plan, U-Haul, removal of four proposed buildings, vehicle canopies, and striping from rear of 10 acre site. Requested by SEC, property located at 503 New Paul Road, tax map 17, parcel 40.03, I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, property owned by Americo Real Estate Company, Mr. Logan. This is the site plan uh request for the U-Haul facility on New Paul Road at 503 New Paul. Uh, so you can see the site here. Uh, it's located um, beside what is becoming Southern Tire and the uh, existing apartment complex to the south and east. Uh, zooming in, you can see uh, some of the work that was done early on for the main building at U-Haul and then this back area, which um, has changed over time. Owners have gone in a different direction, so that's the, uh, explains the need for another site plan this year, um, which you're seeing tonight. So there's the zoning map. Everything is I-2, except the uh, triangle, of course, which is green, which means R-3. Those are existing apartments. So this is the back lot as it looks today. Um, the original site plan from 2019 showed five storage buildings that um, would be built in the back. And after that approval in 2019, the owners decided to change direction and not build the five buildings in the back. So when they were attempting to get a CO around December 1st of last year, um, the city caught the city's attention that they had not built all the buildings that were approved in 19. So that's when this process started of doing a second site plan to take care of all of that. So the current plan, and it's in your packets, is to leave this rear portion of the property paved but not build any storage buildings. Uh, you can see it is striped in this photo. But other than that, there's no plans for any new structures. Of course, this is the main building, what they refer to as Building A, and uh, this is the four-story building that, um, of course, is used for storage and uh, some other uses. Uh, I believe they're going to be renting equipment and so forth out of this building. So uh, the other thing in December that became apparent is that the applicant had not met the architectural standards for the overlay district, so um, they had to resubmit a materials board, and that's up there at the podium. It's the same board as was here two weeks ago. They did cover the building uh, primarily in metal, which is not allowed in overlay. So now they're having to come back and cover that with stucco, which is a material that's allowed in the overlay. Other than that, uh, there haven't been, there never were a ton of engineering comments because 
basically they were just looking to uh, decrease the amount of buildings they were building from 2019. So um, that completes the report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions or comments on this item? I'd like to speak to the applicant if you could, please. Please. Name and address for the record, kind sir. Zach Wolpart with SEC Inc., 850 Middle Tennessee Boulevard, Murfreesboro. So the, the workshop, we discussed this heavily, mm. and it would appear from what I'm looking at, the workshop document that we have is basically the same by the dates change. Has anything changed that we, as we discussed? Um, no, um, they, they did not want to uh, change the, the, that back rear portion of the building. They wanted it as it was. Hey, well, it's not as we discussed, but I mean, I'll let other people jump in there, but. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. Um. Name and address for the record, sir. Sure. Jeff Porter, uh, 1515 Gallatin Pike, Madison, Tennessee. So we didn't change the back of the building because it was already a pre-approved imaging that we have already had done. And it's already painted on there. So it costs us more to, to repaint the entire mm -hmm. building. And we're, we're stuck with more than of the building that's what's required uh, to make it look nice and you know, you know, um, to fix the issue that we have at hand and try to move forward. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Please, Mr. Hernandez. If I may, I have, I have a question of the applicant. Yes, sir. Um, that back lot, as we all know, was intended to be covered RV parking and some additional storage buildings. <clears throat> that idea is being dropped by, by you all today. Um, my last visit out there, it's being used to store um, bucket lift type device, scissor lifts and things of that nature. So, yes. so, so that, that in my opinion is, is not, if the lot's not going to be designed built or, or used for its intended purpose, it's, I don't think that, 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 that we can stand idly by and let it be used as, as space to be leased out for various uses. That, yeah. It's, it's not being leased out. That was the equipment that was used during construction. They just haven't gotten out yet. So once we get our CEO, it's going to be removed. That equipment will be gone. All that material on the ground as well. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments? And I still don't, at least with the 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 color renderings. I don't necessarily see it completely correctly because even looking on here, what appears to be marked as um, the MBCI polar white looks like the natural choice and the area not marked, at least on any of them, for the background in between, looks like it's supposed to be the polar white. Uh, Chairman, do you see what I'm talking about? Here, mm -hmm. the gray scale vertical, and then in here, I don't see that. Um, I, I believe what's happening there is, you know, no, no two printers are exactly the same, and no two screens are exactly the same. So sometimes with graphics, some things get smudged. All of that is polar white, it's like except for those horizontal stripes of uh, relaxed khaki. Um, it's just a issue with our plotter that is plotting it off and leaving a, that odd smudge because there are vertical lines intermixed in there. And that's, I think, I believe that is what's causing that odd difference in color on the plot. Yeah, and that back portion is already done as what's a, what was approved in 2019. Yeah, it's it's the same that, color. Mr. Logan. Could you go back to the screenshots of the building, please, sir? Okay, so what we're seeing on further here back. is basically blend, the lines are blending. It's further back. Yeah. We need to look if there's... Uh, Mr. Logan, do you have a shot further back on the building? Because this is the area that's further back, not the front area and the overlay. This is the, the back area that's outside the overlay. Of this, like that area, there's, there's not one in this show, in this slide show, Just yeah. a little bit out of sight but there. The, 
architectural elevations should match that building. They do. They do. They do. Um, I think what's happening is when we plot them off and put them up in front of the, do you have the PDF available? Did you pull that up? I think it's on here. You can see there's no difference there. It's, it's literally just the plotter is plotting smudges or, or something is happening when, when it tries to print it. It's causing slight variations in the color there. It's all the same color. It's just it's it's that kind of issue with kind of funky graphics and these <laughs> correct. Mr. Coates, if you don't mind me asking, does that appear closer to what you're expecting? No, I mean, we, we, were, we talked at the workshop um, about keeping it consistent, the build being, being consistent, and I think we all agree with that. And so obviously we've got some issues with colors on what being presented, but I'm not satisfied it's as we discussed and as we agreed at the workshop. So obviously we can't address these issues at meeting. So moving forward. So if this was approved in 2019 for that same design, what's the issue now? So the 2019 design was overridden by this application. So when the board asked for a change or a detail, even though it was yeah. priorly approved, it, it's, it's overridden at that point. So. so I wasn't here in the, in the workshop. I was at a conference in Arizona. So the notes that I got were, that you guys would have liked to see the horizontal lines gone and all vertical, right? We'd like it, what we what we mentioned was consistency between the look. As far as we understand that that further down, you're not going to use all the same materials as they overlay, but the look we would like right. to look similar, and that at least from the workshop and guys, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. That's what. I felt that, that we were saying is we wanted that look to be consistent. With the Agreed. I mean, consistency was what we're looking for, I think. Make it look, make it look consistent. I mean, what we're trying to achieve there is a visual focus for our customers so they know where they're going. That's why our showroom is completely separate from the whole storage. So that's where we want our customers to visually see. We don't want them to go to the back of our building and try to find you know, access to their storage. We want them to go where it says your storage place on the sign, and it's architecturally designed to be that way. I understand, but I think anyone would want to go to where the front of the building, where the glass is. They're not going to come to the back of the building. Mm -hmm. to, to I mean, you'd be them. surprised, but you know, we do this all the time. And this is what we're we're trying to achieve. You know, you know, I understand that you guys want you know, mm -hmm. vertical lines all the way down to get rid of the horizontal. Right. So what you what we're looking for is consistency in the building. Um, because we want consistency, consistency throughout the city. When we ask builders to build something consistently, that's what exactly what we're saying is consistency. Right. This building is, to us is not consistent, right? So there's different lines in different places. And you can bring up that well, people don't know where to go. That's what we have signs for. And that's what most people say, oh, look, there's a window, and there's a door, I should probably go to it. You know what I mean? I, I, so I get what you're saying. I, I'm not trying to argue, but I mean, it, was, it was consistent enough back in 2019. <clears throat> It's not 2019, no. Uh, and I get that. And I get that. And gentlemen. And it's a different board at this point uh, than 2019. So, so. At, at this point, I would probably recommend either we go back to workshop with it or we vote. So would we, I'd probably suggest deferral so we can discuss this a little further. I'll be talking if you want to defer. Sure. Let's do that. So we'll make a motion. Make a motion for deferral. I think the applicants made the motion to defer as well. Okay. So we will defer this item and discuss it at workshop. Next item. Site plan 457 Sanford trailer storage on 5.2 acres requested by former Lucas. Property located at 457 Sanford Road, tax map 29. Parcel 13, I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District. Property owned by Saeed Sassoon. Mr. Logan. This is a site plan request at 457 Sanford Road, and uh, the proposed use is trailer storage on 5.2 acres. And um, uh, this is being uh, presented by Fulmer Lucas. Uh, this lot is 
immediately behind the proposed BJ's wholesale. So uh, the top part of that cliff that you've seen in the photos um, is this site. Now you can see it's just a mainly rectangular site and currently it's pretty heavily uh, treed. So uh, the proposal is to remove all those trees and build a parking lot. You can see here, dark blue indicates I-2 zoning, which is heavy industrial. And again, the BJ site is just in front of this site, um, between it and Industrial Boulevard. Sanford runs off of Industrial Boulevard and would serve this site. So looking in the distance, again, we're looking at this tree line here on top of the cliff. That's 457 Sanford. And you can see, this is uh, looking northeast toward Davidson County, but up here where I'm pointing with the red dot is the existing access for this site, uh, just shy of the new light at um, New Sanford, new traffic signal at New Sanford. So this is the uh, originally submitted for the workshop two weeks ago. And I uh, want you to notice, so one of the things is this ingress egress has been widened. So if you look where I'm pointing and you can see the difference this month, I think they've added 10 feet to this ingress egress. So on the screen is the latest with the increased width. And uh, this total site is 5.2 acres. And I believe I've already showed the photos. So there were no, after the uh, workshop, all the technical items have been addressed. So there's none remaining. Thank so that completes the report. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions or comments from the board? The applicant would come to the podium. Hello, I'm Jay Fulmer, 2002 Richard Jones Road. Um, thank you all. A lot of y'all have gotten with us um, offline and, and helped spend a lot of time focusing on this. That, uh, we're grateful for. Um, we know that we had landscaping concerns. We had, we feel like we addressed those at the workshop. Uh, Mr. Coates asked, you know, suggested, and we're glad he did about widening the front drive at the connection. We're able to accommodate that in the remnant uh, right away. Uh, we have the fire hydrant provided um, that that'll be stubbed at the entrance to provide coverage to the site. Uh, we've kept uh, Mr. Brinkley in, in tune with everything we've been proposing there. Um, and you know, we're, we're, and uh, the other concern about the restroom facility. So uh, happy to answer any questions you've got and looking forward to. <laughs> Thank you, sir. To getting any going. Questions or comments, Mr. Coates? I'd just like to say I appreciate the applicant working with us. So they did have um, 10 items on the workshop. They've addressed all 10 items and then also addressed some of the items that we had as a board. Uh, primarily, obviously, the, the water issue of the restrooms and also the, the purification, so that they've pulled things together. Any other questions or comments? I, say, I, I might have missed it, Bo, but did you, can you show where the access road comes in on the, uh, on, yeah, keep going backward. No, I'm sorry, the, on your first map, your first display showing the property. Keep going, keep going. That one. So where does the access come in? No, the, where do you were? Well, right there. That comes right there off of... Do you see the white? Yeah. It, that is an access road that goes down to industrial. Everything to the south of us is BJ's. And so the western portion of BJ's is a sinkhole where all that all their storm drains. Okay. Um, and the property to the west uh, is undeveloped right now as well. And then your intent is to landscape along there? We, we did a tree survey and we're trying to keep as many of the existing evergreen trees and we're gonna supplement it where it's sparse. Uh, we know that it, it's a big issue to not see trailers from from the road. It's pretty and, public with the DJs there also. So right, and we've uh, the ownership group. There's a few representatives here. They they're very close to being able to execute a lease with a, a nice tenant that would you know is a high credit tenant that will keep the site very clean. Um, They've estimated very low turnover daily as far as trucks coming in and out. It's really just for storage of their excess trailers that they, when they built their building, did not forecast. 
having the need for them. How tall is the fence that you're putting around that? Um, um, it, I'm, I'm sure it'll be eight feet, but um, I, if you've got comments on heights, then we can definitely address them. But no, I just didn't see it in here, and uh, I was just curious. Sure. Um, if, what kind of fence were you planning on using? Uh, it it was going to be, I, I think that we're going to go with a just chain length that's screened. And on the on the north side, we're going to have a rock cut wall because there's so much exposed mm -hmm. rock. So from that side, uh, there's already some fencing that protects us from the industrial side. It's, we're, we're really just concerned primarily with the existing or the southern property line and the property line by the residential. And there's existing fencing there that you can't see that's buried within. We're going to put fencing closer into our site with uh, nested within that landscape buffer. Okay. So. Black, a black uh, coated fence would be appreciated. Right. Other than that, I'll make a motion to approve. One, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just have please, you're, please, you're, Mayor. You're fine. You're fine. So, a motion on I, table, I, Mayor. Has, we're going to go discussion. I Mayor. just, I, I wanted to, to thank the applicant, and the, the the owner group that's that's working on this. I know we've had some conversations and gone back and forth, and um, made a lot of progress forward. I know the the screening was a big big part for me and I'm glad to see that's there and that's going to mitigate um, that view there. It's going to be more of a natural view with everything. So um, with that, I will second Mr. Rutledge's motion. We have a motion and a second by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next item. Final plat, Tidal Wave Auto Spa. Combination plat of two lots totaling approximately 3.9 acres requested by Gonzalez Strength and Associates. Property located at Fergus Road and Murfreesboro Road, tax map 18, parcels 1.03 and 1.04. C2 Highway Service Owning District, property owned by TWAS Properties, LLC. Mr. Logan. This is a uh, final plat request for approval for the Tidal Wave Auto Spa and uh, Again, this is at the corner of Fergus Road and Murfreesboro Road, uh, more or less in front of Walmart. And uh, we covered it earlier in the site plan, so I'll maybe skip the photos or whatnot. But basically, the Register of Deeds has this as two lots, and it's been that way for a long time in their records. So uh, in order for the site plan to meet the setback requirements as well as the yard requirements of the zoning ordinance, you couldn't do that as long as this remains two parcels. So there has to be a combination plat to combine them into one. So fairly simple process, but that's what this plat is for. And um, again, the zoning is C2. And there's the plat that was submitted uh, for workshop two weeks ago. And then this is the updated plat that's in your packets. Um, and it does show um, a diagram here on the right side of some right of way dedication as well um, that was not on the plat two weeks ago. Um, engineering has cleared their comments um, and there's not any remaining in the report so I'll be happy to answer any questions thank you sir do we have any questions or comments on this item once again I obviously at the workshop we had uh, nine engineering nine, sorry five engineering items and they've all been addressed mm -hmm. well, with that I will make a motion to approve do we have a second second we have a second by Mr. Rutledge. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item. Subdivision acceptance, Sand Hill Village, property located off Sand Hill Road in Cash Court, requested by Womble and Associates, PDR Plan Density Residential Zoning District. Mr. Logan. I think we're on number 10. Set bond amount? Number 11 is set bond amount. Making sure. Number 10 is subdivision acceptance, Sand Hill Village. Mm -hmm. Did you just read subdivision acceptance? Yes, sir. Number 10, subdivision acceptance, okay. Sand Hill Village. Okay. <laughs> sure about that. Uh, a report on it? So this is for subdivision acceptance of Sand Hill Village, and this property is located off of Sand Hill Road and Cash Court. Uh, you can see it there in the imagery. So um, 
basically Cash Court was built. Uh, it's a T intersection, and Cash Court runs south off Sand Hill and wraps around the um, detention pond there at the bottom. And then uh, you can see kind of a closer view here of all the homes that have been built. And of course, there's a commercial lot here at the corner of um, Sand Hill and Cash. And this is the existing Dollar General store, but the uh, new commercial store, retail store sits beside the Dollar General. And you see the zoning there. This is a uh, PDR, which stands for Plan Density Residential Development. So that allows the uh, mix of commercial and residential. But all this is, is the subdivision acceptance portion. And um, so that completes the report, thanks. Very good. Thank you, sir. My apologies. Um, any questions or comments on this item? So just to confirm, all the punch list has been completed. Is that correct, Mr. Logan? There, there were two items on the, on the punch list that um, Mr. Schreiberman and Michael Dietz have resolved. And as of right now, there are no technical items remaining on the punch list. Very good. Any other questions or comments? If none, we will entertain a motion. Motion to accept the subdivision as presented. I have a motion to accept as submitted. Do we have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. I have a second by Mr. Coleman. Uh, just point of Discussion. order. Discussion. This is um, this is a recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for subdivision, for subdivision acceptance. acceptance. So this isn't us recommend or us accepting it. This is a recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Coates, would you like to rephrase your motion? Rephrase it to uh, send a further recommendation for the acceptance of the subdivision to Mayor, Mayor Alderman. Thank you, sir. And second? Second. And we have a second. All in favor say aye. Thank you, Mayor. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Our agenda is changing just a little bit, so item number 11. <clears throat> request to set bond amount for Carruthers Crossing Phase 2. Tax amount 29, PO parcel 29, requested by SEC Inc., PDR Planned Residential Zoning District. Mr. Logan. This is a request to set the bond amount for Carruthers Crossing Phase 2, and uh, this development consists of 132 lots on 23.7 acres. I can see it here in the uh, photo. Uh, this is the last piece of land in Rutherford County, and uh, so this borders the city of Nashville. And um, overall, this development is going to have about 368 homes when it's finished. Uh, per the subregs, the developer has submitted three uh, construction bids, an average of those plus a 20% contingency, and also the estimate provided by the engineer. And the proposed amount of the bond is $249,550. Very good. Any questions or comments? We should the applicant get in the signatures on all the estimates, and with that, I'll make a motion to accept the bond amount as, as presented. We have a motion to accept. Do we have a second? Our second. Second by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes, and our last items will be bond and letters of credit presented by our assistant city administrator. Good evening, everyone. Um, Kyle's not here tonight, so, um, but you guys should all have the bond list in front of you. Um, everything is up to date, so Sounds if you guys have better. any questions, let me know. Thank you. Do we have any questions? And with that, I will call a meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.